I'm a professor at a state university in Pennsylvania. Um, I live in very, very rural, um, extremely rural Pennsylvania, um, a town named Bloomsburg. And it's part of what's important maybe for you to know about that is just that this is um, very red state, very, very conservative country, um, very um, culturally um, homogenous um, country out where I live. And I've also been a professor there for uh, 26 years now at the end of this semester. So Turning Point USA is an organization that I started to track about a year and a half ago. I just started to see some newspaper articles about this organization that was recruiting college students. And I was immediately struck by the fact that their mission statement, which sounds sort of free market libertarian, they sound like college Republicans, really didn't jive with some of the newspaper articles I was reading about what they were really doing on college campuses. Um, and so I started tracking some of their connections and it, it didn't really take all that long for me to discover that their um, founder, whose name is Charlie Kirk, was at least associated with some fairly shady and unsavory characters uh, in the alt-right. Um, and the, at that point, just sort of nascent, just really beginning to emerge. I don't think we were even really calling it the alt-right yet, um, but associated with some um, white nationalists. In any case, so I tracked them for a while, and about a year passed, and then I noticed that this organization had a chapter on my campus and that they had been formally recognized by my administration and they had a Facebook page and they were using my university logo on their Facebook page, which meant that they were getting university money and they could use university tech and they could use university facilities, right? So I went through the appropriate chain of command at my school and I asked my administration to rescind their formal recognition now, there's something there that I always want to make sure I'm really clear about with folks. I'm really hawkish about free speech rights. I wasn't looking to shut down their free speech rights. We have all kinds of different folks coming to my campus. Some give speeches about things I don't like. I, I'm not really crazy about shutting down speakers. I wasn't going after their free speech rights. I was going after their formal recognition and their use of university money, which was taxpayer dollars, and university resources and facilities, right? I wanted that rescinded. I, I wasn't looking to, to shut them down. Um, in any case, my university, um, I lost. <laughs> I, I lost that battle. But what happened in the interim while I was arguing with my administration was, and this is the part I know that sounds really boring, but it ended up being just a conflagration of assault, was there was an email thread between myself and some other faculty in my administration where we're just sort of going back and forth, you know, about why I want this, their, their um, recognition rescinded, and I started to build this bibliography, which is now 25 pages long, um, you can find it on Academia EDU, and I was sending my administration, you know, all kinds of news reports, and look, they violate their nonprofit status, and look, they're probably engaged in I illegal campus uh, um, um, recruiting violations. And in any case, that email thread got leaked, right? And there wasn't anything in it that I was embarrassed about or ashamed of. Right? It was just my argument for rescinding their recognition. And it got leaked to these really far right um, schmooze, fake news sources online, including um, the Washington Free Beacon and several others further to the right. Like it ended up with links on, on Gab, which is sort of the white nationalist version of Twitter. Uh, it ended up in some just ugly places. And Turning Point, the national organization, got a hold of the email thread, and then they went full out hard 
to try to have me um, harassed or fired, right, or intimidated, and they generated um, a meme. Um, they took a photograph from my Facebook page of, of me at a protest. Uh, I'm, I've been very active in the Pennsylvania environmental movement. Right, so they took a picture, right, I might say a rather unflattering picture, right, of me, I, I, I call it my, my howler monkey picture, <laughs> I guess I'm yelling. Um, in any case, um, they took an unflattering photograph of me and they put it on a meme and um, they put language on the meme that's sort of nonsensical, but it amounted to this professor should be fired, she's indoctrinating your children, she's a communist. I just like that. <laughs> um, and this went viral. And I started getting really icky hate mail and Facebook thread assaults and Twitter assaults. And, you know, it, 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 I learned a lot about how quickly um, viral memes can uh, migrate on the on online in cyberspace because I started getting hate mail you know just from quarters and places you know that I had no idea um, and I started getting pressure right that there's two stories here I was saying this to to Tariq earlier and I think he would probably reiterate the same thing there's really two stories with respect to the attempt at academic repression on university campuses one is the story about organizations like Turning Point USA or Campus Reform or another group called FIRE, right? There's a, um, a number of these. There's a story about their efforts to really silence university professors or get us fired, especially folks like me. I teach environmental philosophy. I teach feminist theory. Um, I teach a, a course on uh, Marxism and post-Marxism. I teach a course on um, sort of a new, uh, I teach the course in critical theory, right? I teach the course on the Communist Manifesto. I teach a course on institutionalized violence, right? I teach a course on repression on Native American reservations, right? I teach that stuff, <laughs> right? You know, the stuff that the folks at TPUSA really don't want to see. Um, I teach logic, they don't like that. <laughs> I teach logic, basic logic. Um, um, they, don't, they have no idea what I'm doing in Plato and Aristotle. <laughs> but er, Socrates, right, that guy's a renegade, right? <laughs> the unexamined life really is not worth living. <laughs> in any case, the second story, right, and the one I think that's really important for folks to understand because it can be told by so many of us in academia now, right? I, the story I'm telling you is, it could be about me, it could be about a number of the people I've met since all this happened, um, is the story about how administrations respond to these organizations. And I, I think in, in one word, the, the word I'm inclined to use is badly. They respond poorly. Um, they, at one level, they're, I think, in many cases, they're just very ill-prepared to respond. They don't, they don't quite know what to do with attacks on their own faculty, and so they retreat. They're, just, they're kind of intrinsically risk-averse. They don't like controversy. They go right for protecting the university's reputation, right, even at the cost of, of, of their teachers. Right? And in, then in this other way, that's, I guess, I think a little darker, Turning Point USA's mission statement, right, that suggests that they're free market libertarians provides university administrations cover, right? So, right, my administration, right, gives them formal recognition, right? And when I say to them, no, look, this is the alt-right, I'm showing you, I will send you materials, I'm telling you this is the alt-right, they say, no, look at their mission statement. Right? They're just free market libertarians, you know, they're like the young Republicans, right? You know, what are you talking about? And they really don't want the controversy, right? Or at least in my own case, but I, I feel like I found this out in a number of places. Um, Turning Point USA runs this witch hunt called Professor Watchlist. Right? They do a lot of things, but Professor Watchlist is one of them. It's very McCarthy era. Um, witch hunt, and it's a list of about 200 professors um, 
all of whom um, look maybe a little bit like me in terms of some of the things that they teach, but a surprisingly a high number of folks like for math or the hard sciences, right? You might think that the folks that would be on that list would be philosophy professors or political science that would be humanities professors in general or social science folks. Now, there's chemistry professors on that list, there's math professors, they're from all over, but what we all have in common is that we have done something that Turning Point USA can grossly misrepresent, right? Like we've said, said um, you know, no to the attempt to repress our free speech rights on our campuses, and they've all been targeted. I reached out after this started to happen to me. I tried to find every single professor on Professor Watch List, and I wrote to them, right? I wrote a long letter kind of detailing what had happened to me, or what was happening, what's still happening to me. Um, I wrote a long letter, and I sent it to everybody on Professor Watch List with a little introduction that said, Hi, I'm so sorry I'm intruding, you know, you don't know me, <laughs> and I'm so sorry I'm intruding right on your academic quiet time right now, <laughs> right? But we, I think we have something in common, and I am trying to generate some sense of solidarity around this, and I, I sort of just want you to know you're not, you're not alone here, and here's a letter, here's what happened to me. I wonder if something like this is happening to you too. You'd be surprised at how much response I got. I, I was, it wasn't that it was a zillion people, but it was quite a few. And most interesting to me was that I got responses from students, including undergrads, undergrads. Right? One young woman wrote me back, um, this short but just kind of, you know, like just, he just sat quietly for a minute thinking about what this young woman had tried to do. She recounted the story of her own professor who had been um, not just, say, challenged or politely debated in class in some fashion that was respectful, but battered in class, right? Just verbally assaulted in class by a student who identified himself as a member of Turning Point USA. Right? Turning Point USA puts out this, this pamphlet called like how to debate your professor and when, which is really about, really should be called how to assault your professor to tears, right? And then embarrass them and force them to quit their jobs. That's what it should be called. <laughs> um, in any case, this young woman recounted what had happened to her professor over and over and over again in class. And most importantly, how the administration had punished the professor and not the student who had attacked her, right? And so this, this student was reaching out to me on behalf of a professor that she was too afraid to even name in order to say, right, there are students who realize that this is going on and I want you to know that I'm one of those. Right, so I don't want to um, monopolize the time here. I want um, Tariq to um, have an opportunity to talk, so I'm going to Pause there. I guess the most importantly, for for anyone who's interested in these issues, and I think that they're Im, Im really important and they're symptomatic of issues going on across the United States and many other venues. Right? It isn't just academics. Right? Turning Point USA has some of its main organizing in high schools. Right? And the chapter on my campus, its leader came from a, came from a local high school. Um, I think what's really important about this is that. Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk, its founder, they know that if they can uh, silence professors, they know that if, they, if professors can't teach, that students can't learn. And they know that if they can repress us, right, and high school teachers, right, and if they have their way, middle school and kindergarten teachers, right, that if they can control education, they can change the country, right? They can really move the country in the direction of an ideology that, that I, can, I would argue and I think I can show on, on good evidence is profoundly racist and it is profoundly anti-Islam and it is just deeply misogynist. 
Right? One of their trolls um, is named Ivan Throne. And Ivan Throne filled in for um, Milo um, at a turning point event last summer. And how Ivan Throne came to be aware of me, I don't even really know. Right? But he began, he wrote a hit piece where he has accused me of being under criminal investigation for domestic terrorism. Um, and it is the most misogynist hit piece, uh, I think, uh, on me I've read to date. It's just ugly. Uh, it's just ugly and it's brutal and it, you know, is alive in cyberspace. And being accused of domestic terrorism, I, you know, not trivial, <laughs> not, not a, not a, not a, not a, and, and he sent it to my administration to try to get me censored or fired. Um, so these folks mean business. Um, I have been compiling this bibliography. Right, for anyone who's interested in any of these issues, um, you can find it on my Academia EDU page. I, I have cards for anybody <laughs> who wants, it's, li it's listed on my card. Um, and the bibliography is now expanded to about 25 pages. Turning Point USA is its um, center, is, in the, is, is sort of the sun, but I have a number of its associations, its nonprofit violations, really excellent journalism done around, done around them by folks at the New Yorker, the Washington Post, the New York Times, the Atlantic Monthly. Um, I, it's a long bibliography and, and it's divided into sections with respect to its racism, its misogyny, its anti-Semitism, its anti-Islam. Um, and so for anybody who's interested, I can direct you to, to that research, uh, resource. It's, um, it's depressing to read it, but I think it's important um, for anyone who cares particularly about education, but maybe even more broadly about stuff going on in the United States with the reemergence of white nationalism um, that I think we need to galvanize our, ourselves in order to resist. And uh, Professor uh, Wendy Lynn Lee's um open letter that she wrote when one of the things that stood out to me um was uh this bit where she she mentioned um that you know one of the saddest parts of this story is not just like the harassment from the far right but the cowardice of university administrations um and and i really think that university administrations all over the country um are kind of creating like a foundation upon which fascist organizing can take place. There's a reason why fascists have made un the university their main organizing ground right now. Like, they're, be they're getting kicked out of every other kind of space. It's mm -hmm. only the university that will tolerate them. Um, so like in my town, I'm in Champaign, um, Illinois. Uh, I'm at the University of Illinois, uh, Urbana-Champaign. Um, like, they can't do anything off campus. Um, they tried to have this racist uh, event at this um, local pizza, like kind of popular pizza place um, where they were going to like do this sort of like native appropriation with like American Indian headdresses and stuff, like a bunch of white boys who have no connection to native anything. Um, and, you know, be, because it's racist. They do, they, they do these things because it's racist. Mm -hmm. And the pizza place was like, nope, you can't do that here. Like, they're like, you can come here as normal customers, but you cannot bring any of your, like, racist gear or pamphlets or anything in here. Um, there's a, another community space. It, it's kind of like uh, it's, it's sort of like community center. Um, um, this uh, in independent, I think it might be the only like brick and mortar independent media center in, uh, in the country maybe. I could be wrong on that. Um, but, um, uh, you know, they've, they've been kicked out of there twice. They're banned from there. They can't, that's like one of the main sort of organi community organizing spaces in town. They can't do anything there. Campus is the only place they can do anything, and that is because the university administration is uh, so coward, uh, sort of cowardly hiding behind this really very disingenuous and shallow notion of free speech, which is actually not free speech um, at all. So like, I actually have been, unlike any member of Turning Point USA, I actually have been arrested for speech. I actually have had my free speech violated. 
Um, you know, when, when I was an undergrad, I was arrested for protesting military recruiters on campus um, and brutalized by the police and thrown in jail. Like, I know what suppression of free speech actually is, and it's not what anyone is doing to Turning Point USA. Um, so uh, in, in my case, um, uh, we've had sort of this white supremacist activity locally for three, four years now. I've, I've, been, I've been there for five years. I mean, Central Illinois is a pretty uh, uh, openly racist part of the country, like shockingly open. Like I'm from Northern Virginia, close to Washington, DC. You know, white supremacy is everywhere. But in like Northern Virginia, it's all these like educated State Department people. So they kind of know how to be sophisticated to use language to sort of hide their racism. Um, in this sort of subtle way. But in like central Illinois, it's just out in the open, like just really shockingly like a um, friend of ours, um, a, a, a black man came to our house and our neighbors called the police. And the police showed up and said, we got a call that there was a black man here. <laughs> what? Like they, that he was committing a crime? No, just that there was a... You can just call the police and say, hey, there's a black person, and the police will show up. Like, that's central Illinois. So, I mean, it's a kind of deeply, like, white supremacist, like, openly white supremacist part of the country. Um, but uh, in terms of, like, open fascist type of activity, um, we, there hasn't been much of that until um, a few years ago, black students... Um, organized uh, this rally sort of, it kind of came like during all of this momentum or, um, against police violence. Um, and so black students on campus were pushing for uh, like greater enrollment of black students, like, a, like the university has dismally low number, like they, they sort of get their diversity requirements by bringing in like really rich international students from like East Asia. And then they say, we're really diverse because we've got like this billionaire from East Asia's kids come here. But like black people who live in like that community, they're not coming to our school. They're not like even getting accepted. So there's like deep structural issues of structural racism. Um, and so black students had this rally on campus um, sort of pushing back and, and making some specific demands. And there was a very uh, immediate white supremacist backlash against that. Like within a few hours, like literally within two hours at the end of that rally, there was a page up on Facebook called the White Students Union um, at the University of Illinois. And, uh, and these pages were made, and then they like other pages started being put up all over the country, White Students Union, and they were posting pictures of these specific black students on campus um, with their names and referring to them as homicidal apes. and. And it was mainly um, focusing on uh, black students and Palestinian students. Um, and so we were like, who the hell are, is doing this page? Like, we wanted to find out. Um, and so we did all kinds of research. Um, you know, the police weren't doing a damn thing. And the university administration was like, well, it's free speech. We can't do anything. So, so us, like... Uh, grad students, community members, you know, people who, it's not our job to figure this stuff out, but we have to do this because the cops and the university administrations won't do it. So we were able to figure out who some of the people were behind this page through like all sorts of detective work that we had to do. Um, one of the guys, one of the main people who was first interacting with it, liking every post was this guy, Arthur Sack. Um, Arthur Sack then, then like the story kind of got picked up by media about all this racism with the white student union page and then he sort of disappeared off of social media for a while. But like we kept all of our screenshots and everything. Um, Cause we're like, we're starting to document like who the hell are these people? We're gonna figure out who they are. Um, anyway, he's the guy that started Turning Point USA uh, the, the first Turning Point USA chapter at UIUC was started by him. He's a close friend of Charlie Kirk. He went to the same high school as Charlie Kirk. And he's over here liking every 
uh, every vile racist post on the white student union page, right? We also found out that the, the person who started the page was a member of the Traditionalist Workers' Party, which is this neo-Nazi group that has kind of fallen apart um, recently. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 clap that. Um, that's largely the result of anti-fascists keeping the pressure on them, right? It's, it's not because of any university administration did anything to them. Um, but they were friends with the, the TPUSA people, and they told the TPUSA people that they started it as a joke. So this is kind of, they always hide their racist activity behind like, oh, it's just a joke. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you're just some humorless leftist, you don't think it's funny. Yeah, we don't think you sending death threats to our friends is, is a very good joke. Um, so that was kind of the beginning of it. Um, and then the college Republicans, they sort of split between like sort of the normal, you know, normal conservatives, and then you had like the, the really like rabid pro-Trump alt-right type guys, the Pepe the Frog type guys. Um, they sort of took over the college Republicans and uh, they started, so then the college Republicans started doing all of these racist stunts all over campus like um, they chalked the quad one night, um, just racist slogans all over the quad like build a wall, Sharia free zone, deport, uh, all this kinds of stuff like that. Um, and they did it openly, they took credit for it. Like this is how uh, smug and confident they are in doing these things, that they openly like, they, were, they, they said they were proud to do it. They're, we're proud of our president, stuff like that. So, um, and, and then, um, so you had like the college Republicans and then you had like the Turning Point USA chapter starting up and it was all like overlap with each other. It's not like they're separate groups. Like, I mean, technically they're separate groups, but they, their membership overlaps uh, significantly. Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have um, on campus, you have, uh, at least at, our, at my campus, the Zionist groups. Um, so you have like a line IPAC, which is like the Illinois like section of APAC or, you know, the American Israeli Political Action Committee. And they've been uh, pretty rabid um, attacking Palestinian students and pro-Palestine students the whole, the whole time I've lived there. Um, they do a similar stuff to TPUSA. I mean, they have like their Canary Mission site where they, similar to the Professor Watts list, but it's kind of like a, a hit list or a black list for um, uh, pro-Palestine organizers. Uh, and they had been coming out and just filming and stalking and harassing pro-Palestine organizers. They filmed my, um, my two-year-old daughter at a rally, and we were like, you better erase that. And, and uh, you know, he said he was, but uh, they, all he really did was call the police and say I harassed him. Um, so that sort of stuff was going on. And then this year, beginning in fall semester, TPUSA has been out there. So... Uh, they say like, we're just free market conservatives. We, you know, we just are peacefully advocate for fiscal conservatism and for responsible economic policies. That's what they say. But in terms of what they do on campus, not a, not a damn thing about anything that has to do with fiscal conservatism. It's all about white supremacy. Right. So the first week of um, a fall semester, they're out on the quad trying to get students to sign this petition to reinstate this old racist mascot. So University of Illinois used to have this Chief Illini wick. It's like this uh, Indian chief invented by the white imagination. Um, it's totally racist. The, N, um, the uh, NCAA actually forced the university to get rid of the mascot. Um, they made a rule like that if you want to be a member of the NCAA, you can't have um, like racist mascots. So a bunch of schools got rid of their mascots, but Illinois was like, we're not getting rid of our mascot. Um, they like, these central Illinois whites, like they cling to their racist symbolism so hard. And you know, they, you still, even though it's not the mascot anymore, you see people all over campus, all over town. Or like people who aren't even students, you know, um, will be wearing like this Chief Illini wig gear all the time. So anyway, TPUSA is out on the quad sign, trying to get students to sign a petition to reinstate the chief as the mascot. What's that have to do with fiscal conservatism? It has a lot to do with white supremacy, but nothing to do with fiscal conservatism. So, um, and then uh, they brought Charlie Kirk to campus to give some 
stupid speech, and some students wanted to protest it. I actually didn't want to protest. I didn't want to have any. At that point, I I was just like, he's kind of like a B B list alt right guy. He's not like, you know, he's not like the, your Milo's or your uh, you know Richard Spencer types. He's just like this. He's like the the nerd of the alt right. Like not not like a smart nerd, but just like this twerp, just like this rich boy, and so he came to, and so I was like, I don't think we should do anything like about Charlie Kirk coming. But some of the some like of the socialist students wanted to protest him, like whatever. Good luck. Um, so anyway, I was on my way to this um, Jewish Voice for Peace event, and I passed by where this Charlie Kirk protest is about to start. And I stopped to say hi to some of the folks doing it, wish them good luck before I go to this uh, JVP event. And um, these three guys come running out who I've never seen before, and they just start yelling, socialism sucks, at the, <laughs> uh, these students. And I'm like, who are these guys? These guys are like zealots. Like They're just like holding up their TPUSA posters that they're like inordinately proud of. Like these most ugliest, like poorly designed. You know, you think a group with over $8 million would have somebody who knows something about graphic design, but they have, you know, them just the ugliest um, socialism sucks posters. And they they're just, articulate. yeah, and they're just yelling, <laughs> socialism sucks, socialism sucks. And they're trying to like provoke people. They have their cameras out. And their goal is, we're going to just yell stuff at you until you attack us. Then we're going to film you. Then we're going to put you online on campus reform. Right. And, and we're going to use that to like stir up this like fake outrage about how conservatives get persecuted on campuses. And nobody took the bait. And so the, anyway, that was the first time I ever saw these guys. I'm like, these guys are like like kind of like they they seemed like kind of like a religious cult to me and in like the really like a rational sort of zealous way they were acting um and then all they were doing like all semester was harassing people and just doing racist stunts on the quad like publicly racist stunts to try to get people to do stuff to them so they could film them um so anyway i was uh giving a speech at some uh, anti-trump rally or whatever and uh I think I was talking about the J20 defendants and trying to, I was talking about how people need to like, this was like right when the J20 case was starting. So I kind of brought up like, we gotta support the J20 defendants. All these TPUSA guys come and they're just like taunting me throughout my speech. Um, and like, I don't care, like you can criticize my politics all you want, like I'll taunt you back. You know, I just, I think, uh, I think I was just like kind of lightheartedly jabbing back at them. Like I knew they were really upset about that undergrads all over campus had been tearing down their flyers. And they were saying that it was um, a violation of their private property. Like the flyers are their private property and you destroyed our private property when you tore our flyers down kind of a thing. And they reported it to university administration and they're trying to make it into like a big federal case or something. <laughs> that someone took my flyer down like as if as if they're the first student group in the history of the world that's ever had a flyer taken down on campus. Um, so I knew they were super sensitive about their flyers. So I think I said something like, oh, I'm gonna go tear down your flyers. <laughs> um, and I was just kind of making fun of them like that. Or I think I said, uh, cause I went on like, there was like two or three socialists who spoke before me. And I think I said something like, all this socialist or all this talk about socialism is going to make those TPUSA guys over there cry. And so, you know, I wasn't like being like mean, but I was just kind of lightheartedly jabbing at them. And like, they are so, you know, for all they talk about how like, oh, the left are a bunch of oversensitive snowflakes. Like these guys are the most thin skinned, like these lighthearted jabs, like they, so they responded to these lighthearted jabs by, by threatening my children. And so I'm like, how the hell did they even know who I am or that I have children in the first place? I've never talked to them before. Like I'd seen them, I knew who they were, but I had never talked to them, never interacted with them, and didn't say a single thing about being a parent or having children in my speech. And one of them was like, don't you have kids to look after? And I took that as a threat. Like, um, you know, university administration is telling me that I'm irrational to have seen that as a threat. Why the hell did he say that? Out of the blue, don't you have kids to look after? How is that a response to anything I was talking about? So, uh, you know, I was, I mean, I'm fine with them criticizing my politics, but you don't, 
nothing about my children is to ever come out of the mouths of people like that. I don't care what they're saying. Nothing about my children is to ever come out of their mouths. So I confronted them to let them know that. And they just sort of surrounded me and we all had their cameras out filming me. And so I'm like, and they're just smirking, ha, 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 ha. You know, and I'm like, you don't, fuck, you know, you don't uh, threaten my children and then hide behind a screen. So I snatched his camera out of his hand and I threw it on the ground. Um, and now he's making that into this whole thing. I was assaulted by an Antifa professor. I'm like, dude, I'm a graduate student. I'm not a professor. And like, I mean, that should be like an endowed chair, like Antifa professor of history. Like, give me that job. I'll be that. But I'm not that right now. Like, I'm just like this nerdy graduate student who like is doing, working on my dissertation. So anyway, they're like, oh, they were assaulted, uh, Antifa professor assaulted conservatives. I'm like, not professor, there's no assault, you're not conservatives. So, and uh, they call the, they call 911, <laughs> right? Big government, their whole slogan is like, big government sucks, the federal government is too big. Oh, we're libertarians, the state needs to stay out of our lives. Oh, let's call 911 <laughs> on this guy right now. So, they called 911 on me. Anyway, I had left by then. And then, um, uh, but anyway, later I was given a, a what's it? A, it's, I wasn't arrested, but I was given a, Citation. yeah, like a notice to appear. Yeah, kind of like a ticket. You know, it was a notice to appear in court for like this misdemeanor charge because I dropped his phone. And so they're like, okay, you dropped his phone. If his phone broke, then that's criminal damage to property. So anyway, his phone didn't break. He said it did. He's like, he spiked my phone into the ground and shattered it. I dropped his phone on the ground, his heavily encased phone, and it didn't shatter. He's lucky I didn't like flatten his ass on the ground for talking about my children. He doesn't understand how much restraint I showed. And so... Uh, he makes up this whole story of how the Antifa professor shattered his phone, didn't fly in court. Like, the court found, like, there's no proof I broke his phone. I didn't have to pay for damages or anything. Case has been dismissed. Um, but it was the university administration who became the attack dogs. They were actually worse than the county court and the police. So the university administration came after me and charged me with violating the student code. They put me on conduct probation. Um, they gave me a whole bunch of stuff about the free speech. Oh, their free speech and their free press and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know what? Stalking and harassing and threatening people is not free speech. And it's, we also have Title IX on campus, which you're not allowed to stalk people according to our Title IX regulations. And they started just following me around, stalking me. I started getting bombarded with threatening messages. Um, the, they put this piece on their Turning Point USA website. First comment, it was like, um, uh, so Turning Point USA guy writes this piece, and he's like, do you think that Khan should be expelled? And first comment, expelled? No, we need to remove this filth from, the, we need to unite as white men and, in a white nation and remove this filth from the face of the earth. And they left that comment. Like, they were deleting any comment, like, in favor of me, they were deleting. So they were on there, like, regulating that thread, but they left that death threat on there the whole time. Um, and I got bombarded with death threats. They started, they put a piece on campus reform, and then that got kicked around all over, like, the far right wing world, like Alex Jones, Anthony Scaramucci. Uh, Lou Dobbs, is who the hell's Lou Dobbs tweeting about me? Like, what, like, what's happened to him in his life that he's that I'm like that some like no name graduate student is like has his attention now? So like, all of these like right wing losers from the conspiracyville are like <laughs> knocking stuff around about me, and I'm getting bombarded with death threats. My department starts getting bombarded with death threats that and and demands that I be fired. Um, my, to their credit, my department did not uh, about like my department was like we're not gonna like be pushed around by these people. But the administration, which is different, you know, my department are like you know they're smart historians. They understand like how fascism operates. But administration, like they're totally out of their element and they totally cower before. They're so afraid of lawsuits. And now, um, now Turning Point USA is suing them for violating their free speech. So 
they totally acted as the attack dogs of Turning Point USA, and Turning Point USA is still suing them. Um, because one of them just got impeached uh, from, he was a member of the student senate, and the student senate just impeached him for, he was like, used his position on the student senate to harass this DACA student. And they publicly put all, like attacked her on their TPUSA site. It's not just like professors, they're attacking other undergrads. So there's this DACA student and TPUSA was doing this racist uh, build a wall event where they were commemorating the, all the people who've been murdered by undocumented immigrants. And they had this like fake wall that they were building. And this DACA student wrote a letter to the student government like why are we allowing this stuff to happen? And this TPUSA member on student government gives it to his TPUSA buddy. They post it on Twitter publicly and start shaming her. So he got impeached from the student senate for abusing his position to do that. And so now he's mad. The other guy got uh, punished that he has to write like a 1,000 word essay about what he did wrong because he sent, uh, he was uh, inciting violence against, like online he was straight up telling people like kick his ass and about me. And I'm like, this isn't, this isn't free speech. This is straight up incitement to violence. And so administration was like, okay, we'll make him write a th thousand word essay. He refused to write the thousand word essay. He says it's against his fifth amendment to write the thousand word essay. So now he's suing the school because they're violating his fifth amendment rights. And then this other guy that keeps stalking me, everywhere I go, he's there filming me. He's, yeah, he's there filming my kid. Uh, they showed up where my wife, off campus, my wife at, is a meeting off campus, has nothing to do with any student group. They showed up at her meeting, right? And they had to get kicked out of the building. Um, they're like, just been harassing my family. I've had like weirdo, like just like, who the hell is this guy in a hood and mask in my front yard taking a picture of my license plate right now? Right, I'm just like getting bombarded with all these threats and just being stalked. And like the one guy keeps stalking me, so now he's in trouble for continually stalking me. And so he's suing the university for that. So they have this lawsuit that me and the university administration that has done nothing to protect me and that has been nothing but hostile to me, that we have all like in a conspiracy to uh, violate the free speech of conservatives. So that lawsuit's going on now. Um, and so like these university administrators think that like they can just like bow down to right wing pressure and they'll be okay, but they're still gonna get sued. Um, anyway, I, uh, I'm, I'm ranting now at this point. Like, you know, I'm angry that these guys, the thing that I'm most angry about is not these guys. These guys are nobody. Some 18, 19 year old rich kid twerp is nothing. It's the university administration who are empowering them. And that's what I'm angry about. Um, and yeah, yes, clap that, no. <laughs> and, but uh, to connect this to labor organizing, right? So it's my, my labor union was among the first people to get my back. So I'm in the graduate employees organization, right? They put out a statement in my favor. They funded my legal defense. Um, uh, and they helped like sort of, and they helped to sort of get a counter narrative out, which is another important part of this. Cause the right wing puts out these narratives and then they try to make it to a point where like, say you're, I'm, gonna, I'm looking for a job and they're gonna look up, you know, they're gonna Google my name or whatever. And all that's gonna come up is a bunch of right wing hit pieces about how I'm like an Antifa professor who assaults conservatives just cause I don't like conservatives, right? So it's really important to get a counter narrative out too. So um, that's one of the things I did was I had to reach out to people largely through labor union networks that I'm part of or through like other radical networks that I'm part of. Um, and got like leftist um, uh, journalists to put out good stories. So like Maximilian Alvarez wrote a good piece in The Baffler. Um, my, uh, my wife, Christina, um, and, um, and a journalist in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Shane Burley, put out a good piece called Young Fascists on Campus. Um, there was a piece in the local leftist paper, the public eye put out, uh, is putting out a series of articles. So we're getting this counter narrative out so that the right wing's narrative is not the only thing that comes up when you start looking into these things. Um, and they're not just attacking me. They attacked a Native American woman on campus. They sent pornography to her office to try to get her fired. Didn't work and they're like, they knew what was happening. They've attacked um, several undergrad students, particularly immigrant women who organize. Um, and so this isn't about free speech. This is about a gang of thugs funded by right-wing billionaires who are stalking, harassing, and threatening people. 
and, and, and doing it all under the guise of free speech. And we got to like reject that argument outright. That's not free speech. Um, and university administrations are going to have to grow a spine and stand up to that. Like they're just leaving us all out here to deal with this stuff on our own. And, and then, you know, so many people were finding out that the administrations that are supposed to be protecting us are actually part of the right wing outrage machine that's attacking us. But, but ne neoliberal. I think they kind of look like they have sort of a, they definitely yeah. have fascist, I guess closer yeah. to the middle but, or to the left. But, but. It, it, it sounds just from your description that, that they're corporatist. That's what I think. Right, right, they're corporatist in the sense that they're looking to privatize. privatize. But they're not necessarily racist, and they could be people of color. Sure. I, I don't know that I think that necessarily means that they might not still be racist. Um, because if they're aiming to privatize what still ought to be a, a public, right, a, 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 a critical, a foundational public resource like public education and public literacy, um, but they're going to privatize, it's still ultimately going to subserve what's ultimately a, a, a racist class system that divides some students from others in virtue of who's going to be able to go to the charter schools, then it seems to me this still ultimately serves ends that are, that are anti-democratic, even if some of the nice folks who are involved in that group and are duped, <laughs> right, are, are, are nice people. I don't... There's a member of Turning Point USA. She's like the VP. Her name is K uh, Candace Owens. She's, she, seems, she seems very nice <laughs> to me. Um, she's um, uh, a very sprightly, energetic, African-American young woman. Right? She's Charlie Kirk's like, right-hand person, so far as I can see. And she uses a lot of language about how the Democratic Party machine is the real slaver of African Americans, and um, how you know true liberation for African Americans is going to come in the form of signing on to um, these. She calls them libertarian, but they're really very far right ideals. And um, she talks about you know, women similarly, right? That. Um, th th there are only, in fact, two genders. They wear T-shirts that say there's only two genders. And, um, you know, she has come, come to understand, you know, what it is to be a truly liberated woman. But there's a lot of dog whistle language built into that, um, that, it, that underneath, even if it's subtle and even if she's really nice, <laughs> still s s seems to me to be fundamentally misogynist and racist, and it still ulti ultimately subserves an, an organization that is deeply anti-democratic. So I, I, th this sounds like a wolf in sheep's clothing to me. Just from your description, um, be wary. <laughs> And then in student groups you're talking about, I, I think, sorry, yeah, I think those kinds of groups, um, I mean, I can't speak to the specific ones at Berkeley because I don't know, like, anything about them, but at my school, like, we have groups like that, too, and I think they are the people who sort of open the door for the fascists to come in. Mm -hmm. So, like, they would never send me a death threat, but they'll put those fascists in a position to where they can threaten people. So mm -hmm. an example would be, like, Okay, so this guy, Andrew Minnick, he's the president of um, the TPUSA chapter. He's the one that got impeached. How did he get on the student senate in the first place? Mm -hmm. He was the chair of the diversity and inclusion committee on the student senate. That's why he was getting emails sent to him about incidences of racial bias, because he's supposed to be dealing with that. But instead of dealing with it, he forwards it to TPUSA, and then they like attack the person who filed the incident. But how did he end up as chair of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee? There's right. not enough right-wing, like, far right-wing people on student senate for him to get elected. So we had to go look and, like, see who voted for this guy. 
It was, it was the liberal Zionists. Why did they vote for him? Because he said that he was going to stop any kind of um, discussion of BDS. There was a divestment campaign coming up. And so you have these Zionists who are like, they're also pro, they show up at the DACA rally in favor of DACA students. Um, they vote for Democrats, but they hate Palestine. And so because they hate Palestine, they have that in, in common with these, with, uh, you know, the TPUSA guys. And so they voted him on there so that, and the, the only thing he did, the only thing he did in his position was sponsor a resolution to make it against the rules to discuss divestment at all in student government. Now it failed, but that's what he did. So, so you have all of these liberals, they vote for Democrats, they're nice, they're, you know, they supposedly they're pro-immigrant. I mean, they don't want like, you know, they don't want, um, you know, Ethiopian immigrants going to into Israel, right? But they, you know, they're in terms of the United States, they're pro-immigrant. Um, but then they're the ones who are given a platform to guys like Andrew Minnick, who then use that platform to terrorize people, like literally just harass people and make their lives miserable. So, um, you know, again, I can't speak to the specific, you know, Berkeley, how they, how they are interlock, but where I am, it's the, the liberals largely overlap with the far right people over Palestine. Mm -hmm. Well, and Tariq made the point earlier um, about the, the young Republicans. Um, it's the, very much the same on my campus, right? There's the young Republicans, they're the conservative kids, but they've been largely just expropriated by Turning Point USA on my campus. Um, and so whatever the young Republicans are doing, it's really just kind of all the same kids. And so they may have great stuff like pizza night and bowling night, right? But they still showed at their last meeting a film that, um, that, that trotted out the Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas thing. And when I confronted them directly about that and said, you know, look, how do you not get that this is racist, right? How do you not? Their specific words to me were, no, it's not racist because we're talking about Indians. I'm not voting. Yeah. No. And, like, it just kind of stops you. But, yeah, <laughs> you know, how do you even, and she said this, this was a nice young woman. Her name's Carissa. I, I saw just this stunning ignorance in her face. No, no. It's not because they're in, like, where do you even, where's your inroad there? <laughs> um, right, and it's, but it's why education, right, as we were pointing out over here, is so critically important in public education that has not become corporatized um, and expropriated. It, it's so, and it's why the, the union movement is also so important. On that, um, the, the TPUSA guys uh, locally where I am, they were going to like socialist meetings and posing as socialists for a while. Um, I mean, they're not good at it. Like they get, <laughs> they get found out immediately and they can't do it anymore. But I mean, they do. I'm not saying that person is TPUSA. Like I have no idea what that person is, but yeah, it sounds. It sounds like it's probably something like more, like more uh, alt, uh, more more neo-Nazi than uh, alt-light fascist. But yeah. He's by the way, he's half black and half Indian, South African Indian, and uh, he actually told me he had a grandfather who was, you know, Indian South African, been an uh, official in the South African Secret Police. So anyway, this is something told. You, you know, though, it's. I think part of what we're trying to to figure out here often is the the political atmosphere in which we now all live in the country, and and it, I know it varies from location to location. Um, where I live is not just conservative, but really deep red God and, God and guns country. And I was just thinking while you were talking. This last five weeks of my life has been a, f a firestorm, even after Turning Point USA. Because since the since the election, I've had the the American flag in the window of my office at school that just look, happens to look out onto the quad, uh, upside down since November 10th of 2016. But five weeks ago, a guy who identifies himself as an Iraq War veteran, his name's John. 
I think it's pronounced Frommel, for reasons I don't know. All I know is that he used a Turning Point USA, the meme I talked about earlier, as a way of attacking me. He went on a screed on a, on a Facebook page and um, made a number of defamatory remarks like that. I threw kids out of my class for wearing Make America Great Again, baseball caps or t-shirts, which is, is just false. I've just never done that. That I threw kids out of my office, that I routinely failed the conservative students. You know, as if I even know, necess I, don't, I don't know necessarily who the, you know, unless I, t I don't know. I don't need to know. Um, but this generated such a conflagration that, and this makes the point again about administrations, that my dean came to me two weeks ago um, to my office to pressure me to take the flag down, which I'm not doing, <laughs> um, on the grounds that I was killing 2019 freshman enrollment. And, and the point is that wherever this conflagration came from, turning point or not, an angry Iraq war, I don't, and why he got so angry, this Iraq war veteran right now, since that flag has been up for 15 months, it, it, like the, the tape is peeling on it. It's been in my window for 15 months, exactly where it is. Why this conflagration now, I have no idea, but it generated more than 2,000 Facebook comments, um, a campus reform threat to write a, a hit piece, which notably they didn't actually end up writing. I pushed back really hard on campus reform and they didn't post it. But if I had, um, I was saying to Tariq earlier, a half a penny for every single time online this last five weeks, I've been, I've been called the C word, but the, the other C word that's not communist, the other one, the what, that one, <laughs> um, you know, I, be on vacay in Costa Rica right now. <laughs> um, and the number of police reports I've had to make have, have now been four. Like I've had to get police to stand outside my classroom because I teach at night. Um, and I've had to have an officer standing outside my classroom to walk me to my car. And the thing is, is I don't know how connected to turning point that is. I don't, I really don't know. But what I do know is that the atmosphere that they generate is so repressive and so potentially violent, right, that I now have thoughts, right, I'm sure Tariq does too, about going to class and something happening. <laughs> you know, I just don't know. And, I, and they, you know, they used a turning point meme as a way of attacking me, but there are so many places now online where you can find that meme that they might have just, you know, happened on it. I, I just don't know. But that's part of what's so repressive and, and so generally scary, right? But it's also important to say galvanizing. Um, I took some real heat from my dean. I, I have now been denied uh, a post to summer chair. Um, I've now filed a grievance with, through my union. I, we're unionized. Um, and my union, I have to say, is actually kind of stood up for me. Um, our faculty unions can be a little more like guilds and a little no backbone-y. <laughs> but this time, you know, we'll see. This time my union seems to be standing up. But the point is well taken is that the, the, it's not just an organization. It's the world that we're living in. And that so many other academics, clearly, under circumstances that, that are worse, I, I have some power because I have tenure that Tariq does not have, that these professors clearly did not have. I, I am painfully aware of that. It makes me feel more, that much more responsible to fight back. And so that flag stays in my window. <laughs> You know, until we return to sanity in my country. <laughs>